Welcome back, everybody. This is Derek Kirby, and this is the Kirby Create Podcast. This is episode six, I want to say. Six sounds right. And uh, I am joined again, first time in a while, by my buddy, Law Nation. We have Mm -hmm. done many a podcast and live streams together talking cowboys. Mm -hmm. Law, how are you doing today? Oh, well, I'm doing great. Uh, I can't complain at all. Um, since this is the sixth episode, this could, this could be a a foresight to the Cowboys going to get their sixth Super Bowl ring. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Oh, man, if that happened, don't you know how crazy that would be? We, we should ever, forever yeah. uh, embrace this episode for that, right? Oh, ab- absolutely. <laughs> that uh, this, this episode will get recirculated if that <laughs> happens, whether that be this year or whenever. It, Eventually, it's got to happen at some point, right? Like probability. Right. It's got to happen at some point. And eventually, they have enough talent. They should be able to figure it out. But I'm getting tired of wondering how long that's going to take personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, we keep saying that there's going to be different things around with the Joneses. And and they just who they are. They, they slow move into the free agency. And, and they still sell the level of optimism to us all. Yep. So... Uh, we we just at the mercy seat of them, but we are loyal. We are loyal to the uh, to the Cowboys, and and so far that's just how it goes from here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's uh it's always interesting. I I fully grant that it is always interesting with the team, and now they've made some moves. We'll see what they do in the upcoming draft. Hopefully, they can mm-hmm. solidify that defense a little bit better because mm-hmm. offensively, I feel like they got most everything they need. I know there's obviously the talk about pits. If, if that's there, are you tempted to it? I rather go defense, but you know, I know there's people who, who feel that the difference in what you might be looking at uh, mm-hmm. potentially on the defensive side, unless you have, um, Oh man, his name just slipped my mind. What's the Bama corner that just popped off the page oh, last week? Uh, uh, Patrick yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, if you have that guy there, then that, I think that's where you got to go. But I, I totally understand the allure of Pitts. I just feel like we've invested so much in terms of draft capital and now money on the offense. We got to balance it a little bit with the defense. Yeah, I, I can look at the defense and we can say, man, last year historically bad, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we look at the fact that even on the offensive side of the ball, who will be your guy that can grab red zone touchdowns and these sorts? So it's always that battle. Will, will uh, I guess, Petra Sertain be Morris Claiborne 2.0 or will Cal Pitts be, I guess, the quote-unquote uh, Egram kid that's over there in Giants land or, or will he be like the O.J. Howards? We don't yeah. know. It's just the roll of the dice when you're talking about draft picks. Right. And that's that's totally fair because, I mean, what did the Cowboys tell us in the case you mentioned Mo Claiborne? They told us he was the highest rated corner they'd had coming out of the draft since uh, Deion Sanders. And <laughs> that career trajectory did not exactly line up. So, yeah, mm-hmm. but we'll we'll see what they end up doing with that. But what uh, one thing I wanted to get into real quick here. So uh, with this, I wanted to talk a little bit about a little bit of your background and like how kind of you got into the YouTube game and everything like that. I think when I came across your channel initially, you had, I want to say three or 4,000 subscribers. If I'm, right. if I remember correctly, Dallas prospect wasn't even a thing at the time. <laughs> it wasn't even a twinkle in my eye. Right. It was, uh, it, I was running project shanks, which was still around towards the end of its line, but I had just kind of inherited that website. And I, I remember I reached out to you on that. You were doing a lot of uh, profile pieces on draft prospects that you thought the Cowboys should look at. And uh, before, again, before prospect was even a thing, I remember we started doing, um, right. you know, weekly podcasts and things like that together. And that was, that was the first time I had done anything like that. So like the first experience I had doing any kind of regular YouTube content was collaborating with you, which you know, that, that's the thing, like people ask us a lot about, you know, how you kind of get into this sort of thing, how you break into it. Well, I was fortunate enough to, to work with you pretty <laughs> much right out of the gate. And obviously you're one of the, the heaviest hitters in the Cowboys YouTube sphere, as it were. Um, what, what, uh, what was it like for you kind of getting started early on? What brought you to kind of start creating content on YouTube to talk about America's team? 
Well, it, it was challenging at first. Uh, it was a, a passion that I always wanted to talk about the Dallas Cowboys and always had my love for the Cowboys, as you can tell. Uh, Shango was one of the guys that, and if you guys don't know Shango, just type in Shango Live or, or Dallas Cowboys Shango, and you'll see his face, name, and logo there. And he was putting out content, and I used to always sit there and watch his content. And I always had the love of the game, and, and I was trying to, uh, to to see how I can get involved into that. And I just had to turn on the camera. And yeah. when I turned on the camera, uh, every day, at least post one video or every other week, post my thoughts. And, and now look at it, everything grew to this point. But the main thing was I was doing is I, I would upload like, partial clips of the football game and and we'll go over and dissect most of those things and and when the draft came around a lot of people asking like what are your thoughts on this so I'll try my best to to showcase what I thought on on certain players and and that's when you came along and and I think that this ride of uh, of knowing that this Cowboys community is so strong we got mm-hmm. different types of opinions and views is make us one big family and, right. and this thing has continued to grow on multiple platforms, whether it be YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and as well as Facebook. Uh, we, we just one big community. And that passion, uh, it's, it's a labor of love, but somebody got to do it. And, and I've been with it ever, ever since then. Was it, a, was it a tough thing for you kind of finding your voice early on? I mean, obviously yeah. you've, you've got the cooler than the other side of the pillow kind of vibe <laughs> and everything about you and like a perfect voice for this sort of thing. Uh, but was that something where, whether it was confidence or whatever, that it just took a little bit of time? Like I know in my case, it took me like a year and a half before I felt comfortable even just starting my shows. Usually I'd start and I'd be running 100 miles an hour just trying to throw <laughs> everything out there. Like just hurry up and start and then I'll settle in. And it, well, took, it took time. So I'm, it, I'm curious yeah, if you it, had any of that. Oh my goodness. It took a lot of time. Uh, and and, I, and I, I cannot finish watching like some of my older videos. I cringe yeah. in, in my vernacular. I cringe at the way I ended my sentences. And it was just crazy. Um, but over a course of years, uh, everything began to merge itself together. And, and we got people now that are starting off on YouTube just light years ahead of me because just now starting off, they already got everything put into place. They mm-hmm. got camera, lights, uh, equipment, and things like that beyond. But I tell everybody, if you ever want to do any of this, just start off like me with a cell phone. It, it doesn't take high-dollar equipment. It just takes passion, love, and insight. And uh, my loved one told me, just go ahead and do what you love to do speak on things that you love to do or speak on things that you like to talk about. And lo and behold, it's been the Cowboys ever since then. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, my, my early content, I can't even, I can't look <laughs> back at it. Like I, there's a, a screenshot basically I have from my first video. I'm in, I mean, I'm in a dark room right now, but I don't, the lighting is so bad. It looks like it was recorded with a potato, not a camera. Like it's like 12 pixels total in the image. It's bad. And, uh, I'm completely uncomfortable. I'm very soft spoken. And like, I, even though I'm talking on something like, I think it was a post game show, like an NBA post game show or something. And Mm -hmm. I sound like I'm unsure of what I know for a fact. I just watched like it's weird Mm. in that regard. Like confidence is such a thing and it takes a while to find your voice. And that is that, that, that's something you mentioned, like just starting, not like Mm. thinking that you have to have the high value camera or all of that. Like we've built through this, like, obviously like you've set up like your, your whole uh, background there and everything like that, which is very impressive by the way. Appreciate Um, it. (laughs) but that that's all been like a pro a process and right. I like all of us have refined over time, but initially you just kind of start out and you just see like, all right, I might be a guy just standing in front of a, a white wall or something in my case, right. but I, I can talk about the game a little bit and I'll see, you know, kind of as we go, maybe I invest a little more in this as I kind of find my rhythm and kind of get a better idea of what I'm trying to build. And at this point I've been doing, I'm going on about four years now, I think of Dallas prospect. And if you include the tail end of project shanks, I guess like four and a half years at that point. And even now I would still argue that like 
I have a general idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> like I I've come a long way, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, there's all kinds of content ideas that I have and things I want to talk about, whether it be Cowboys or Mavericks or even stuff outside of that. I have a general idea on that, but it's, uh, it's something that takes time and you learn by doing. And that's one of my problems. I always wanted to, like a lot of people have that temptation. Mm -hmm. They don't want to create anything or put it out there. Cause they're like, I don't want to suck. I don't right. want it to not be good, but it's like, you don't get good if you don't put it out there and you don't know how to improve unless you have something to refer back to and you can get critiqued by mm -hmm. people commenting and viewing the things like that's how you learn and grow in that regard. So I'm, I'm curious though, because obviously everyone, it, it, while everyone has to kind of find that voice and everything like that, their journey to YouTube is, is a little bit different, right? Like everyone's background is different. You've talked a lot about how you're, where you're from Mississippi mm -hmm. originally. Where is it? Nacogdoches? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah it yeah. was Natchez. N Natchez. Natchez. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so how, how is, uh, like you your background, your you night. think kind of, and the thing is when you're in a small town, go ahead. Oh, so, oh sorry. Go, go ahead. I think there was just a connection oh, oh, initially. Oh. Oh, no, no worries. No worries. I, oh, I was saying that I'm from a small town. And and most of the time when you're from a small town, uh, everybody knows you by your first and last name and and your margin of errors are, are very small. But I, I come here to tell everybody that you learn more passionate about doing. So I, I always tell people, even when you're first starting now, now that I'm looking at it from the outside, looking in, you know, for myself, if, I'm, if I can see myself 40 years ago, mm -hmm. I would tell myself, do not paint yourself in a corner. Although I love talking cowboys, but sometimes it feels as if though I'm only stuck in this area. I can't talk about basketball. I cannot talk about soccer or baseball or all of the other things that I would like to talk about mm -hmm. uh, because of the uh, the niche. I don't, I don't narrow down the niche so much that people only want to hear uh, cowboys content yeah <laughs> and 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 there's riches and niches but you got to look at it like how much do you really 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 want to paint yourself into a corner and can't talk on other topics because i could talk about your guy luca right you know <laughs> yeah nice win tonight over the celtics luca yeah was insane insane and and look look at that guy you know yeah. how, how long he been in the league this is his years? third season third season and he, and he plays like a veteran who's been there for five to 10 years and yep. he, he can very much so take the Dallas Mavericks above and beyond where, where they at right now. I just think that they need to figure out way, how they can get pieces around him right. uh, to help him out a little bit further. Cause I don't want the case for, for him, like the other guy, Dirk. Uh, the, uh, not, not him. Uh, he, he plays for, I want to say the wizards. Uh, he was on the team. Talk about uh, Russell Westbrook. Who's with the Russell wizards Westbrook. Now? Yeah. You know, it was a topic came out earlier today or, or yesterday. I guess Stephen A. Smith was going at him saying that, yeah. hey, he don't have a championship and mm -hmm. he's this and he's that. But he said, hey, I made it to the NBA. Yeah, I, I actually won in life. You know, right. this is an ultimate place to be. Now, I look at it like this, Derek. On one end, he would get bashed for not winning a championship, right? Right. On the other end, he would get bashed if he go join a super team. Mm -hmm. And this is the age of super teams. Yep. So he's in that middle place. It's hard for a brother like that to win a championship by himself. And I would say this, if Durant would have stayed, maybe, just maybe. But that's the story of a different day. Yeah, or if they don't blow a 3-1 lead in the Western Conference Finals over the Warriors. <laughs> but yeah, it's... uh. It's, it's always something, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's always something The I, I yeah. definitely know what you mean as well. When you were talking about kind of being boxed into the, the niche a little bit, how it's mm -hmm. like, you can have great success in one area, but it makes it hard to kind of break out in other areas. That's one thing that, uh, another group of content creators I've worked with a lot, the sports theory, I've always been really impressed how they've been able to connect with such a wide and diverse audience because they just right. cover everything. They'll cover mm -hmm. baseball, basketball, football, college, pro, like boxing matches, WWE events. Like they cover mm -hmm. everything. World Cup. It's just sports in general. And so people see that and they see like they do that kind of like real time commentary. Mm -hmm. And so they flock to it. And so they've built this 
incredibly diverse audience and mm-hmm. they can go on and do whatever. So like if they want to take like a random stab at something like one time, um, they were messing around just joking on something and they did like a video discussing like conspiracy theories or something. And I was right. like, I, I was marveling at how many people were watching that live stream. I was like, wow. this isn't even like, this isn't at all anything you do. And yet you've got all these people like mm-hmm. hanging on your every word. Like I was really impressed, but that's so hard to do. Like, right. I, I have not been able to do that. Like mm. I struggled to break out in the, the Cowboys discussion just because like there's so much competition for like eyeballs when it comes to Cowboys talk on YouTube. Right. And, you know, if I did shows with like you and James and stuff like that, I could get decent traction, but I was frustrated because I, I was like, you know, I know my stuff and I can, mm-hmm. I can jump on here and I can talk about it and they'll do okay. But it seems like there's a glass ceiling I can't get past. And so I was like, all right, I need to open it up. And so I started talking Mavericks. I started talking about a few other things and the Mavericks one for me caught on and that Mm -hmm. then flipped it where my audience balance and everything kind of turned on its head where it went from a predominantly Cowboys audience that may or may not watch to overwhelmingly Mavericks audience. And now Mm -hmm. it's like, if I put anything Cowboys out, that gets almost no traction. And I'm like, (laughs) right. Okay. Well, I'm glad that I'm getting traction with the Mavericks finally, but like, I still wanted this to work, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's, I, I totally get that. And God forbid, if I ever want to do like a, a movie analysis or anything like that, I've done those from time to time, just whenever I've, I see a movie and it gets me thinking, mm-hmm. I, I start, you know, picking it apart and theorizing and I enjoy doing that, but those get no traction on prospect. Cause that's pop culture wow. versus sports. <laughs> I had to literally create like a sub channel that was specifically pop culture content off of prospect in order to like start building a separate audience. And I'm like that, okay, I get it but that is still frustrating that like you have to start over in a sense, like, okay, you want to talk about this? Great. You start at zero. Like, damn it. I was hoping I could, you know, and poured over at least a chunk of this, but it's a, it's, it's a challenge. And the people who are really, really fortunate and really good at it are, I think able to bridge the gap uh, a little smoother than I did initially. I, I think that the way I'm going is just, you know, I'm, I'm cool with it at this point, but it it was definitely a transitional thing having to kind of create a new brand and start trying to put out content for that, but it'll never be as consistent of content as prospect, but. Oh my goodness. Well, it it just, how it is, you know, uh, it's like the seesaw effect. Mm -hmm. As as soon as you lean to one side of it and nobody, the, the, the people, the fans, the people that watch and support, they, they're going to balance it by, watching all of your videos and they give you that level of high. Mm-hmm. And now it's your turn to pr- produce more and more content that they want to listen. Right. So it's the people that, that, that falls in love. And once you can develop that personality, man, it, it, you can just do just about anything. And I've seen tons and tons of channels I was reviewing. That's why I even started to do a little gaming on my channel because mm-hmm. I saw Whereas a lot of people like those, those high, high volumes of uh, YouTube watchers, yeah. they all started off by doing gaming channels, yeah. right? It was like playing the game and then they branched off to their individual personalities. And I think Sports Theory kind of figured that out too, because a lot of people love their personality right. and, and the slogans that they put out. And now they can just do anything they want. And I think that we can, but it, it will be that seesaw effect. And yeah. a lot of people be like, nah, I don't want to, I don't want to go. I don't want to play no more. Right. But when you mentioned movie reviews, uh, are, are you a big fan of uh, DC comics? Yeah. Pretty big fan. Did you watch that Zack Snyder's cut? I haven't yet. I, oh I, my God. I, I don't want to I plan to. I'm also <laughs> waiting on, uh, I know it dropped today, but I'm doing a review on the new Godzilla vs. Kong. The last oh, yeah. I did a trailer analysis breakdown with actually Josh from sports fury on that pop culture channel, cheap pop. And, mm-hmm. uh, that that's one I want to follow up with a film review on the new one, but I am probably going to have to wait until this weekend to watch it. So yeah, it's uh, it's very crazy. Cause I'm, I'm also finishing out my degree and everything at school, my sports wow. journalism degree. So life is very, very crazy. Oh yeah. What school, what school are you attending? Uh, UNC there in UNC. Yep. Here in Denton. And, uh, it's close to my house and everything. And they have a good sports journalism, uh, certificate program and everything like that. So finishing out my 
uh, bachelor degree and getting that. In fact, I'll have the sports journalism certificate after this semester in a few weeks. Okay. Okay. So, so you still got the website operational because I, I still get some people to say, Hey man, I saw you on his website and, uh, and yeah, they said they, they, they kind of like the content of the layout and the flow of everything. Yeah. I, said, yeah. I, I need to remake, like make over the website. I, I think it's in need of kind of a, a sprucing up and everything in that regard. And I want to, cause now obviously I've been going through and like studying journalism and doing all that. So now I know like my writing's at a higher level now than it was even when I was cranking out content for that every day. Mm-hmm. And so I want to raise that bar a little bit and kind of do a, almost, almost like a reboot, if that makes sense. Like I kind of want to elevate it that way because I think while it was great, it was putting out content every day there was definitely a stretch of time where I felt like I was just cross posting YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's not what I want this to be. I don't want this to be just a dumping ground for the YouTube videos I do, or you do, or James does, you know, anyone associated with the website. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to make it like complimentary content, even if it means not posting every day, but posting a couple times a week, I'd rather have like a really good profile or feature piece or something like that, like actual sports journalism that I can connect back to, you know, these other videos or content or anything like that. So I've been mulling over how I want to go about that, but the website is still active. Good old quality over quantity. And, and, and think about this, maybe just maybe in in the future, you know, it'll be one of those situations where you have live interviews, uh, specials and things like that, where people will even, you know, purchase to watch you know that's just yeah. how it goes right now in this modern day time of of uh being able to talk to people and beyond so yeah i, I could see that on their website yeah i i think it's it's definitely one of those kind of bigger i think ambitions that i have and what that one boils down to is just the time to do it because you know i i developed the website and all that myself so it takes a lot of time and i'm juggling full-time job <laughs> full-time school schedule everything I'm doing with prospect and, you know, the nine month old daughter. So (laughs) it's a lot on the plate. Usually my, my quote unquote free time falls into like the eight o'clock to 10, 11 (laughs) o'clock, whatever window there after she's in bed. And I've got a little bit of time to, to work on whatever I need to plus spend time with a little bit of time with my wife, you know, you know, cause you gotta, you gotta balance that as well. That's, that's one of those things. You outnumbered, you know. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and but, little girls, they are very sassy. I got uh, a four-year-old and a nine-month-old at the house. And and when it's time for bath, it was just bath time um, about an hour ago. Mm-hmm. And I was giving her a bath house and, hey, honey, it's time for bath. And then she just looked at me and rolled her eyes and said, did you take a bath? I said, <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. So get ready for it, Derek. Get ready for it. Yeah. Harper is, uh, she's definitely developing a personality at this point. And it's, it's very interesting to kind of watch that come about. You're just like, Oh, okay. So this is, this is how we go about this, huh? Like you can, mm-hmm. you can, even though she can't speak yet, like you can sense this, the sassiness to it and things like right. that. So I, I totally get where you're coming from. That's, uh, that's probably inevitable in my future. And if she has my smart ass as well, then it's, it's, <laughs> there's no hope. It, it's right. only fitting that I would be destroyed by my own. <laughs> like she takes my trait and turns it on me and it's like, oh, okay. So yeah. I'm getting a taste of my own medicine here. Oh yeah. You but, can get a lot of it. Uh, I, I will never forget um, for, for the shots for the first time for my oldest one. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had to get her shots and everything and watching that needle go in and, and as, as, as much as hair I have on my face, boy, I cry like a baby uh, right. because just knowing that, you know, uh, that that a life that you you pay attention to and a life that you're responsible for, mm-hmm. you don't want to see him in pain. Sure. And and especially as a first time father, you want everything right for him. And it, it just but it's also a, a wonderful feeling to be a dad. Uh, to know that, you know, someone want to kiss you before they go to bed and, and they, they look for you to be their protector. So it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I've grown so much from that. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, in, in Harper's case, just with the whole COVID protocols and everything like that, oh, yeah. her pediatrician's office only lets one parent in. So my wife's been the one who's been 
taken her to those. So I haven't actually had to watch the shot happen, but I've wow. definitely had to comfort my wife when she was a little bit, uh, you know, like you said, no one wants to see their kid in pain uh, mm -hmm. dealing with that. Thankfully, Harper in each instance thus far has been able to kind of calm down and chill out within a matter of a couple minutes afterwards. So that's always good. But yeah, it's, it's interesting as well. Anytime like Harper's at the point now where she's standing on her own, she's crawling wow. everywhere. Like it's impossible to keep <laughs> a bead on her. She's just moving or she wants you to pick her up. Like she's just nonstop, but she's not very coordinated yet. So she is liable to tumble or to bump into something. Half the time she's trying to like crawl up your legs. If you're sitting on the ground and she slips and like hits her cheek or something on your knee and you're just like, Oh, this isn't going to go well. <laughs> like you, it's one of those things where you're like, ah, like I no, I'm, I'm trying to help you. And like, you, you feel awful, but you're like, I was just sitting. Like I, I was right here. I was trying to get to you, but I didn't get there in time, but it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a, an incredible thing. Like it's exhausting so much. Uh, sometimes some mornings Harper wakes up and she's just, up like a full right. hour earlier than normal so instead of like <laughs> usually it's seven sometimes she just wakes right. up at six and you just know like if she's sitting up in the crib like okay we're not going back to bed and you go in there and you're just like dead tired but like she's just beaming smiling at you and it's like mm -hmm. it's hard like it, it's it, I, really it's impossible to like not smile as well like you could be like grumbling as you're walking in the room like oh my god i'm so tired this, this is not going to be a good day if I got to get up already and not get enough rest. And then she's smiling and you're just like, Oh, okay. Hi, sweetie. Hello. Like it just kind of like brightens your mood, like a smiling child, particularly if it's your child, uh, does a lot just to, to kind of change your mood. It seems like, but it's uh it's one of those greats and also very tasking <laughs> challenges of, mm -hmm. uh, of, life i guess is raising a raising a child raising a, a kid and everything so yeah yeah but and you just and you just explain that's exactly how youtube is you, <laughs> you, you're struggling you, you start off falling fumbling and, and before you know it uh anybody that's watching this show and beyond you can run you know before you know it you can talk in full sentences and and it just Everything like that happens quickly. And you look back and you say, man, look how horrible I was at the beginning, but now yeah. look at me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, that's, yeah, that's definitely a good point. It's one of those things where, you know, in my case, one of the things I did to try and grow in addition to just forcing myself to get on camera and to put the mm -hmm. content out there was I went about trying to network. Like I said, I reached out to you, uh, you introduced me to James actually. Um, and, you know, worked as well at, at different times with like Vach Lombardi, Mark Holmes, um, Akoye. Barry, Barry Griffith, uh, the yes. Cowboys experience. Cowboys experience. Yep. Barry Griffith as well. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, it's one of the good things as well. Cause like, not only do you learn from working with all these different people and it makes it easier to kind of find your voice as well in that regard, but obviously networking in any capacity is good. Mm -hmm. Like in the case of Barry, that was, that was some and the person that she was well introduced me to. And that, that was a very cool experience. That's just one of those things that kind of, as you grow and you build up, um, it opens a lot of doors in that regard. So like in that case, like, um, you know, that got, that got you in touch with, originally like drew Pearson and stuff like that's still one of the big highlights I would say of my channel is that I had at least a five minute interview with yeah. drew Pearson on oh, the channel. Oh, oh, with, with the hall of fame, hall of fame, <laughs> drew Pearson. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's to me still one of like the high watermarks I would say for the channel. And, it, and it's one of those things where it's like, it was just a, a live remote at the lava cantina pep rally the day before mm -hmm. I want to say it was the lions game the Detroit Lions game uh, mm -hmm. when they came to town. And uh, that was the Brett Maher game winner in like his first <laughs> game with the Cowboys or something. Wow. I remember I did like a profile piece on him after that, that uh, Barry and them loved and were trying to push out there. But um, 
Yeah. So you be undefeated when you go to those events. So <laughs> next uh, year you gotta you gotta attend all of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's undefeated. <laughs> I, I, it's a winning record. I it's know a winning that. record. It's a winning record. <laughs> it might be like four and three, but it's a winning record. <laughs> right, right. But uh, yeah, so that that's that's one of those cool things too. But it, you know, just through this kind of great bond of connections and networking, you open these different doors and you get to to talk to different people. And I know like with which you James and sky put together with like late night hype, you guys, you know, you were talking to like active players, former players, things like that, mm-hmm. like opening up all kinds of doors. You guys were kicking all kinds of ass uh, <laughs> right. doing that. Like I was, I was kind of sitting by just like, Oh man, I'm so jealous. Like that's so awesome <laughs> that you guys are there. Like in a, in a good way, like, right, uh, right. Like that's so awesome that you guys are there. Like I was, I was always uh, sharing content and stuff and pointing people that direction as well. But yeah, it's um, that that's that's really cool. How how is uh, I guess how has that kind of been interacting with these players and then kind of the humbling feeling of the ones who even have seen your content before and like know who you are. Like that that's a surreal mm-hmm. thing that I can't even imagine. Well, uh, I always say validation is only good for parking. Mm-hmm. But uh, when, we, when we look into this and when we start speaking with players that's validated, sometimes you got to get a little feeling of, hey, I, I made it to a point where they value uh, our thoughts, our opinions, and our content. And, and it's a good feeling. Um, some of the players that, that we got a chance to interview and talk to, uh, it, it created a a bond, and and now when I post on Instagram or when I post on Twitter and and uh, as well as Facebook, they kind of reshare the, the information mm-hmm. or or they they kind of give shots outs. Uh, I posted a video, well, a, a link earlier today about best player available. I had on there um, the Cowboys selected Greg Ellis over uh, Randy Moss. Mm-hmm. And the person that commented, the first person to comment under under it was George Teague. He said, "Ouch!" You know, uh, yeah. George Teague reached out to me and said, "Hey, man, don't don't beat us while we down." You know, right? That's a good co- communication, and and I, I'm glad that he's transparent with everything. And and, and they reach out to uh, us as as well as on, on other uh, partnerships and communication lines. So it's a good feeling. But yeah. knowing where we started and now where now we are here. Uh, this is only the beginning. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, like, like I said, I, I haven't experienced that with regard to like players knowing of my content, but I, I have had the handful of occasions where a person has recognized me, like someone who's watched the channel and right. like say something in like to me, like in person. And that's always such a trip. Like you almost, it almost feels like a, like a Clark Kent Superman thing, right? Like it <laughs> right. feels like a separate life or whatever, right. like a separate personality and uh, an alter ego. And then suddenly like you're in, in a different setting, like called back to that. And you're like, Oh, what, what's happening? Like you're, you're aware of this uh, right. one case of it and it worked out um, in, a, in a funny way. It kind of helped me make the point. Uh, something that I've been working on for a while is kind of this big collaborative network and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And, and I've talked with you and I've talked with James and people as well on that. But I was, I was in a meeting with someone, um, you know, kind of feeling, feeling things out for possibly kind of bringing them in on this thing. And while I was having the discussion, you know, it was a much larger channel than mine. Mm-hmm. And so like, you're already kind of feeling like you're, you're up against it a little bit, you know, where it's like, Oh, the smaller channel is going to try and say like how they can help me or something. Right. And, uh, while I, I was like having lunch with them and, uh, some dude just like came up, he was like, Holy shit, DP. And uh-huh. I was kind of like, what? <laughs> and he's like, Dallas prospect. I was like, Oh yeah. And he's like, dude, I watch your channel all the time. Like you're great. Like me and my brother both watch your, like everything you put out. And mm-hmm. I was just like, you would think I planned this. I was like, even joking. I'm like, you would think I planned this to try and like pump myself up a little bit, but no, um, mm-hmm. I did not. It was just, it was just one of those like really cool kind of humbling things, but it, it is always a cool thing to, to know that people appreciate it. Sometimes it's easy to kind of like, you see the live chat when you're doing the stream right. and everything like that. And you see the mm-hmm. comments that come in, you see the subscriber count, but there's not a face associated with it. And mm-hmm. so sometimes it's easy to kind of 
disassociate from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when you actually interact with someone in person, it's like, oh, you're, you're real. You're like an actual person here. Like it, it gives it a whole new clarity that it might not have necessarily had before. And that's always been something that's a really cool thing to experience, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tangible um, uh, interactions are always a, a, a plus. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's worrisome, too. <laughs> like oh, yeah. I said, with the good thing, with the players interacting with them, you do get the bad. I, I recall uh, speaking ill of uh, 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 Antoine Woods, and, mm-hmm. and he, he got really upset about it. And he said, we'll see about that, you know. Uh, right. Here's a guy who's five foot 11, maybe <laughs> 310 pounds, you know. Yeah. And said, we will see about this. Like, you, you're like, what do you mean, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You got to stand firm to your stance. And, and I'm not no big five foot, 11, six foot guy, 310 pounds myself. I'm not that guy. So what do he mean? You know, but right. I, I, I feel exactly what you're saying. Somebody that when you see him in person, it's a whole different interactions versus seeing him from afar or, or on uh, these uh, social media uh, platforms. Right. And, you know, one one of those things as well is like just with the, the kind of relentlessness with which you put out content as well is it's inevitable at some point you're going to step on someone's toes or (laughs) offend someone like it's impossible not to Mm -hmm. and like i even at my highest level of productivity in that regard i've probably put out four or five pieces of content a week and those were mostly post-game shows that that's talking Mm -hmm. like when it was the NBA bubble last year and the playoffs um, that they did in Orlando, like that kind of content where a lot of it was post game or like day after, like trying to right. delve deeper into the analysis of the game. Right. It, it, it was not the same as like, like for instance, uh, you're prolific in content creation. That's always been something that oh my I've, goodness. I appreciate it. <laughs> been uh, very impressed by how even in like the off season, you can put out pretty much daily content. And I'm just like, my God, I ran out of things to talk about two weeks ago and he's still <laughs> cranking out daily content. Like that's incredible. How, uh, how do you stay on top of that? I guess like how, how did, how do you fit that in always? Cause I, well, I, I have like periods where I can do a lot of work and then it slows down and then I can kind of get back going again. Like, it's a yo-yo. Yeah, it goes back to my seesaw method. Uh, once I put the video out, now it's time for the fans or, or the people that watch to jump on it and push me back up. And, and sometimes if I'm stay, still up here and they still down there, they're going to want something. Mm-hmm. So I, I just keep give, 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 give until they give back to me. And, and uh, I try, I try my, my darnest to, uh, to, to get out and put out great content. Uh, just my opinions. Every day, there's something that I, I like to say about the Cowboys, something I read, an article, uh, something I watched on TV, whether it be good content or bad content from first take or undisputed. Yeah. I try to put myself in the mindset of maybe there's a three to four million people that watch this. And it was the wrong thought. It was the wrong opinion. Let me put my opinion with it and match it up with everything that they said so we can balance this world out a little bit. Now, yeah. although I'm on the low end of it and they get majority of the views, maybe the few collective that I got a chance to speak to, maybe if I can sway their mind just a little bit. So right. That's the way I look at it, Derek. I always try to put out something to sway someone's mind. I'm not trying, but it just, it just my thoughts and hopefully they can yeah. grab hold to my way of thinking. Yeah. The amount of time someone has sent me a Skip Bayless or Stephen A. Smith <laughs> segment and told me I need to do a reaction or a counter argument to it. I, man, if I had a nickel every time, dude, I could have <laughs> already gone full time in YouTube. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. at so, like I, I did a few of them early on. And eventually I just got to a point where I was like, man, and maybe it, maybe it's me being a little bit on a high horse now that, you know, I, I've kind of trained and studied in journalism, but mm-hmm. I'm like, these guys are supposed to be sports journalists. They're not journalists. Like this is, right. this is clickbait. This isn't right. real. This isn't actual arguments that they're having. You know, especially like in the case of like Stephen A. Smith, he likes to trash Luca all the time. And I'm like, right. 
yeah, because it's Luca's fault the Mavericks haven't done better. It has nothing to do with his supporting cast or what the franchise has or hasn't given him yet, or just the fact that, hey, maybe he's a third-year player, not even through his third full season. Maybe we don't put the pressure on him already and say that, why haven't you won a title? He's 21. Right. <laughs> right. or maybe 22 now he's 22 now 22 yeah yeah but it's like are you kidding me like it, it's fake and it, it, that's why it gets me is i'm like it, it, there's not a there's not a counter argument to have because every video i would just boil back to those same points i feel like is like yeah this is a really dumb argument but i've already told you that about his past arguments and it's the same counter you know the same counter let yeah. me ask you this luke is 22 years of age mm-hmm in the NBA, who would you who would you rather have on your team outside of Luca? If you can just do a straight up trade. Oh, straight up trade, man. If if you so, have to get rid of Luca, though. Yeah, I mean the thing with that it's is it's hard. Like, yeah, well, yeah, of course. Because here's the thing, right? Like, if you're giving me one year to go do something, that changes the argument. If you're talking about like, hey, Luca's already a top ten player in the league, and now we're baffled by you know like oh how high can he climb in that top 10 Mm -hmm. he's 22 years old like oh would you rather have this guy well no because i'm probably thinking long term like Mm -hmm. i mean you could have arguments about like like lebron or an anthony davis or something if you're giving me a one-year picture but like if you're talking in this grander scheme where it's like hey you're building a franchise then no i'm i'm taking luca every time like there, there's not anyone else I would build around right now. And I mean, yeah, Zion's an, an absolute monster. Oh God, and yeah. now that he's kind of like putting together this like point guard skill set, like he just, <laughs> right. he just ran rough shot on the Mavericks the other night. But of course, uh, Mavericks weren't at full strength in that game. And it's, they, they're messing around so much and frustrating me this year where they're like, we're committed to this plan of resting our guys. I'm like, dude, you're the eight seed. You don't have time. <laughs> and like, you know, padding in the rankings to be messing around and dropping these games against teams that you could beat. Like, oh, we lost right. to Oklahoma City because we didn't play Luka or KP. Well, I don't know what to tell you. You should have played at least one of them. One of them, right. Like, you know, just things like that 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 frustrate me. But as far as Luka, I, I don't think there's anyone else. If I'm thinking long term, I don't think there's anyone else right now I would go with over him. And I, I think it's funny, like, you know, Trey Young, he, he's a great talent, but I, I think Luca's got the higher ceiling and I think Luca's the better player right now. I would say Luca's, like I said, in that top 10. And uh, it just, it makes it, it makes it interesting. Yeah. Like, and, and that's, that's where the, the owner and of course the coach, you have to pivot from there and say to themselves, okay, we got this brilliant talent in, in Luca, you know, any, any night, this guy, this kid can just get off and there's nobody. He's yep. doing things that we never seen before, even in the passing game. Yep. Uh, you, you would think that you are liking it to a, a, a magic or someone, but no, this kid can, can pass, he can shoot, he can drive. And mm-hmm. it, it, it may not look the way as flashy as, as, as others, but this kid is, is generational. Oh, yeah. So what the Mavericks got to do is figure out this problem on solving the issue of why free agents don't come to Dallas. Yeah. They need to figure out how can we change and turn the corner and bring in players that's willing to play with under the system. Is it the head coach? Is it the owner per se? So right. they gonna have to figure this part out because you don't want Luca to get 26, 27 and we revisiting this same conversation. Right. Cause yeah. by that time, LeBron is gone, right? Mm-hmm. All of the, uh, well, it, all the other guys will be longer in the tooth. So the, all of the excuses and all of the reasons, like I mentioned before, many of times on my channel, everyone have a reason, but results are what matter. Right. And I don't want the front office nor the coach or the owner to be the part of the reason why Luca don't have a championship here in Dallas. Now, yeah. I, I know I'm going on a mini rant right here. I, and although you it. already know who my favorite team is, and, I, and I, by me being here and just listening in and watching some of the games here, mm-hmm. um, We've seen a little bit out of it with Dirk, right? Right. A little bit. And Dirk had to go through a whole bunch of things to win his championship. Mm -hmm. He had to knock down some kings, right? Yeah. So 
uh, probably and the I single about the greatest basketball playoff team. run if you think about it. Like in terms right. of like who he had to go through, he went through like five or six MVPs by himself <laughs> right. as the only All Star on his team. And you don't want that to happen for Luke, no. you know? <laughs> no. So they gonna have to work this, coach. Hey, front office. Hey, right. Owner, come on, y'all got to make this thing work. Y'all got to make it shake. Yeah. No, they see. They I can have talk to... a little basketball. You yeah, see, I got a little basketball, Libby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they they absolutely need to do something, and they need to figure out the free agency thing because they they've never been good in free agency. Like you right. could make an argument, the best free agent signing they've had in the last fifteen years was Monte Ellis, and Monte Ellis was a very yeah. good Maverick for two years, something like yeah. that. Like he wasn't here long; he was here for a cup of coffee, and. It, it's like you got to figure out at some point why you can't attract like Dirk style of play wasn't as sexy, I guess, to a lot of guys. And then he got a little longer in the tooth. And so they're like, no, we're not going to go here. And then of course, Dallas finally wins the title, blows up the team. And so people are looking at that. They're like, this organization has no loyalty to guys that just gave them everything they ever wanted. Why would I go there? It's just, it's this frustrating thing. And, you know, in the case of like Luca and KP, we don't know what KP is. We know when he's at the top of his game, when he is physically and mentally right, he, he is an all NBA talent. Back. When he's not, he looks like he, mm, I, I don't know, man. Like there were metrics for a good portion of this year where he was like mm-hmm. the second worst defender in the league. And he's a guy that has been, his reputation has been built around his defense. And so that's one of those things where it's like, that's incredibly concerning now he's he's bounced back and done a little better now. But again, bubble KP last year in Orlando, he was averaging 30 and 10, but another injury derailed his season, made him start this season late. Granted, it was an obscene like 10 week off season for the Lakers and Heat. It was seven weeks, right? Like stupid short off season, but still um, they've got to figure out like, is is it? really a case where Luca can't attract free agents, even though you would think he should be able to with his, his ability and uh, how he can set guys up for just easy buckets. You would think he should be able to, but if he can't, they need to do what they have been good at doing. And that's making blockbuster trades. Now I'm not saying you swing for the fences on a dumb move, like the Rajon Rondo trade, (laughs) but you absolutely do something. And I feel like the last three years, they've been making like small little moves that are just so minute. Now, here's the thing. I I think JJ Reddick's an okay pickup, but he's 36 years old. He may or may not play again this regular season because he's dealing with a a heel injury. Right. And so it's like, okay, cool. So we got a 36-year-old sharpshooter who may or may not be ready by playoffs. Cool. How did that make us better? Like it, it's, I know there's more circumstances to it, but they've got to figure out. I feel like they're tepid. They're afraid of making the move that either blows up the chemistry like the Rondo one did right. or sets them back. And they keep thinking, Hey, just wait for, just wait for the right pitch, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And then we'll try and knock it out of the park. And it's like, you're not necessarily going to get the perfect pitch. You just have to see the right pitch and hit on that. So it's, we'll see what they do, but yeah, I agree. They're, they're playing a dangerous game because as much as we love Luca and as humble as he seems mm-hmm. to be, there's no reason to think that we're going to have another Dirk situation where you have a lifer. There's, there's no right. reason to assume that's going to be the case. Mm-hmm. Remember Kevin Durant and how everyone thought in Oklahoma city, he was the most humble superstar ever. And Oh, he'll never leave and blah, right. blah, blah. He's like the biggest villain in the NBA. Now <laughs> he takes on fans on social media daily and clashes with sports journalists. No, like or clashes with comedians, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like <laughs> I'm like, dude, five, six years ago, I guess, whatever his last year in OKC, if he just goes like to that, nobody there if you had told them like then what he would be doing now and his reputation now nobody would have believed it and i think in his case he just got tired of kind of playing the role of uh you know the the good soldier or whatever Mm -hmm. and just kind of dropped the mask or whatever but 
still. Uh, and I'm not saying that's what Luke is going to do, obviously, but right. you, you just can't assume like, oh yeah, this guy's going to be here forever. And he's, he's a lifer and blah, blah, blah. And we'll figure it out eventually. And we'll win with him. No, nah, Durant gave nine years to OKC and they never got over the hump. They only got him to the show once. And you could say whether or not, you know, obviously he shares blame and failing to get over that hump. So does Westbrook. So does Harden for the brief time he was there when they were actually contenders, but there's just a lot to it. And I feel like the Mavericks are playing a dangerous game with Luca in that regard, where they just seem to assume they've got more years than I think they might. Well, well, this is the thing right here. You know, I think like we are in the age of super teams mm-hmm. and the uh, owner and everybody else in their front office is going to have to look at it and say, damn it, we're going to have to do it. We're going to have to start saying, okay, this window, it, although the window is this big, we might have to make it smaller yep. and, and try to get this thing to be, a, get, get this guy some help. It's just, it'll be a waste of all of this talent and all of these wonderful views that we are seeing uh, out of this kid. It'll be a waste. It'll be just like I mentioned earlier, the Russell uh, Westbrook mm-hmm. situation, you know, um, and I don't want that to happen for him. Russell, yeah. I, I've never seen a, a player, a basketball player that is explosive as him, that, that's able to do all of the, He's like a triple-double king of over there. Oh, Westbrook, yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. So my thing is we, we, we are watching like this legend mm-hmm. in the making, right, in Luca, And I think that you coined that name, Luca Legend. Yep. We are watching this kid do all of these wonderful things, and we don't want his story to be like uh, uh, of Russell or or we don't want it to be like Kevin Durant. You don't want to see him go to another team and right. you sit there saying, oh, my goodness, you know, yeah. he's now winning a championship on a whole nother team. You don't want that right. as well. So they got to do something. Come on, Dallas. Yeah. For real. Come on. <laughs> it, it, all, it always makes me sick when people do like photoshops of him in a Lakers jersey. I'm just Ooh. like, oh God. Like, I know that's your team, but I'm like, I, I, I would love it. Yeah, I would I know love you it. would but, love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my, my perspective is always like, ah, dude, come on, man. Like, if, if, you know, if you leave, fine, but don't, don't go join like a super team. At least go somewhere where even if you formed a new super team somewhere, I could accept that. But like, you know, the photoshops are always like him and Anthony Davis and LeBron. And I'm like, don't, no, don't do that. Like at least go somewhere where you make the team that beats that team. You know what I mean? Like, no, no. If he, if you, come I, over, if you over, come over to the Lakers, I'm going to be like, yeah, I won't be. <laughs> yeah. Fair but but I, I feel you though. I feel you though. <laughs> yeah. But we'll, I mean, we'll see what they do. They've, they've got, it's a good problem to have, right. Having the generational right. talent and having to figure out how to, put it together because think about what they were post title before they drafted Luca. Uh-huh. I mean, we were having to convince ourselves to get excited about no, no disrespect to these guys, but like Yogi Ferrell, Harrison Barnes, like we were having to like try and convince ourselves like this is the future of the team and this is the new core. And like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this, <laughs> these, these are passing, you know, passing phases while we try and figure the hell out what we're doing. And now you've got uh, you've got the generational talent. And you just got to figure out how to put it together. I don't know what the what the missing piece is. Like I have ideas of what the team needs, right? But I also know that if KP plays like the player he's shown himself capable of being, this team can beat anybody. Yeah, but the you can't thing. convince me that if KP doesn't get injured in the playoffs last year, they don't beat the Clippers. They went to six with just Luca. Facts, but that's a big if, though, with KP. Oh yeah, no, I, it, that's that's the problem with KP, right? Oh, that is, that is the know. the biggest thing. Like he's one of those guys that ha- had he been healthy his entire career, and it's crazy to say this, he's twenty five, <laughs> right. but it's like had he been healthy his whole career, he could have been, you know, a top hundred player all time, like all time great talent. But because he's not, because that consistency just is not there he probably is the most inconsistent thing. That's why I don't know that you can bank on him as your number two guy, even though you're paying him $153 million over, you know, a five-year contract. He's in year two now of that new deal. It's uh, I I don't know, man. I I think they got to figure something out where they, they bring someone else in where he and KP are like two a and two B, if that makes sense. 
It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see what they're able to do, but it's, uh, it's always interesting. <laughs> it's one of those things too, where, you know, as, as good as bringing in like a talent like Luca is, it's good and bad in the sense of like the discourse. Cause while you have all this exciting energy around the team now, you also have expectations that I feel like in the blink of an eye became unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Like now you have the narrative kind of being like, well, look, if they don't win a playoff series this year, Luca's not signing a new contract after next year and he's gone. Like I, here's the thing, right? If you look at a guy who is a top pick and is like up for a max contract, like the five year, 53, $153 million contract KP got. KP is the only guy to not initially take that deal. Now those guys might've taken that deal with their original team. And then before they filled out that contract completely right. gotten traded or forced their way out, but they always re-sign with the team. Mm. KP was the one exception and it took unreal circumstances for that to even happen. I don't see that happening here. I think Luca is re-signing, but that doesn't mean that you have a ton more time. Again, I don't think you can bank on it being another Dirk. It might right. just be like, hey, this buys us another one to three years. And depending on how much of a, a contender you can build yourself into in that time, that might be give or take. Mm -hmm. They just have to figure out something for it. But it's a good problem to have. But I, I think a lot of the fans that kind of came over with Luca they've only ever seen him win. They've only ever seen him at that upper echelon. Upper echelon and so yeah. now a lot of these newer Maverick fans, they have that expectation where they're not willing to, to go through a rebuild. And they're like, well, Hey, you got Luca. Why aren't you already doing better? Well, it's year three of Luca. <laughs> if you look at the team, when Luca came in, he's the only remaining guy, him and Jalen Brunson are the only two guys left basically from that core. And we're talking over the course of two years, like it's a complete roster rebuild. Now, now there's more than that. I said it. And then I thought that's not accurate. Someone's going to call me out on that. <laughs> there, there are exceptions, but as far as like main parts, there's been substantial turnover and uh, you know, I, I think there's got to be a little bit of, reasonable understanding there. And if we get to the point where we're year four, year five, and we're not breaking into at least the conference finals, then yeah, I'm right there with you saying like, all right, you're, you're officially squandering this, but to say yeah. like, Oh, if they don't do it in year three, despite this being such a weird year, it's already a failure and we need to either completely tear the thing down or, you know, Luca's gone. Like it, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. It's just one of those days where it's, it's a wait and see, but they can't they can't look at the window this big. Just look at it smaller and go out there and, and, and just blow this thing up with this super team uh, philosophy. And, yeah. and, and just like with, with what I said earlier, you know, damn if you do, damn if you don't, right? You know, they say, oh, you, gotta, you only got the ring because you got the super team. Or they, it could be the conversation where it is, you don't have a ring. And that's what the Stephen A. Smith and the Shannon mm -hmm. Sharps and, and everybody at Chris Broussard and all of those guys, they're going to talk about the ring aspect. Hey, you don't have a ring. Right. Got all of the talent in the world, but don't have the ring. And, right. it's, and it's, it's sad the way the NBA is, but that's just how it goes, unfortunately. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's unreal. No real journalism, right? No, none of that real stuff. It's just barbershop talk. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, it's one of those things like I'm, I'm cool with those discussions and stuff, but I'm talking about like when, uh, when you got like Skip Bayless, I mean, virtually anything he does, but like <laughs> there's, there's cases like that where you just have takes out there where it's, it's ridiculous, he either lacks nuance or it's something like that. Like Shaq's not a sports journalist, but he had a statement like uh, when Luca had the, the game winner, and I think game four, over the Clippers last year in the playoffs, the buzzer beater. And he, he had like 46 or something points, 47, something just stupid. And mm -hmm. Shaq's reaction was like, no, I just think we're blown out of proportion. I've seen this before. It's right. Damian Lillard. It's <laughs> James Harden. It's Russell Westbrook. And I'm like, dude, all those guys 
aren't tw- at, at the time Luca was 21. I'm like, none of those guys are 21 doing that. Do you want to know what they averaged at 21? It's nowhere near as good. <laughs> it's like they weren't doing like you're judging them at their absolute peak right now mm-hmm. versus him at 21, not even it's not even sniffing the surface. And you're saying like, oh, see them at their absolute best. And what he's doing now, that's about even. So I'm not impressed that he did this at 21. Like it's lacking in any context or nuance. And like mm-hmm. when you have those kind of things being, and again, Shaq's not a sports journalist, but um, his opinion is, is bigger than him. You know, it, so, it carries weight. Yeah, carries exactly. Weight. Yep. And, and that's when it's frustrating as well. And um, you know, you, you have stuff like that. And that's when I'm just like, ah, this is, this is not real sports talk. Like it's, it's counterproductive. Cause it's like, why would you take what, you know, in this case, I'm like, why would you take one of the guys that's one of the flag bearers for the next generation of super talents coming up and minimize or marginalize his accomplishments and say like, ah, I'm not impressed. He's we, we've already got this. He's not that great. Like that's a oh. weird take. <laughs> it is. It's crazy though. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. But anyway, it's a, uh, it's always interesting, whether it's talking Mavericks or talking Cowboys or what have you. There's right. always a million things going on. It's always a circus of some kind. And the only question is, when the hell are one of our teams going to win this stupid thing again? <laughs> we can only, we can only uh, shoot for the moon if we miss. We are landing monster stars, right? Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully we, we, we hit this time this year and my Cowboys win the Super Bowl and maybe the Mavericks can... Hey, it's land of opportunities, right? Yep. Absolutely. Come on, stay healthy. That's our idea to stay healthy. Health is, is the wealth part of it. Absolutely. Well, uh, before we wrap up here real quick, uh, what do you, what, uh, what do you got coming up and I guess the, the future and all that, what's, what's the future look like for the channel law nation? Oh, well, the draft is right around the corner. Um, so we're going to talk draft, 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 and more draft. And, and then once the player that we talked about get on the Dallas Cowboys, there will be some reviews of, of players. And then we will be looking at the second wave of the free agency. Uh, I think that that, that wave will be more than, than any other wave because there will be a lot of teams that are trying to stay under that, that, that threshold of the cap salary or yep. what have you. And um, I always like that part of it because the Cowboys got so many uh, needs right now that I hope that they draft in this particular draft best player available and get things going in the right direction. So that's, that's my plans for the, for this off season. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. It's, uh, that just reminded me as well. When, when I started Dallas prospect, one of the, there were multiple reasons why I chose the name and everything, but one of the things as well that I had in mind was since we were doing so much collaborating, I was like, Oh, well right. you're doing all these draft prospect profiles. And so it's like right. a natural, like it's even referential on that front. That's perfect. <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, that just randomly popped back in my head. Like I remember when that was part of the thought process, but yeah. So, all right, cool. Well, uh, yeah, guess thank what? You. Hmm? We, we, we were in the middle with LVE. We all like, we hated the pick. Yeah. And we were all wrong about the pick for a then, year <laughs> for a year. And then now we all right about the yeah. pick. <laughs> yeah. That's how fickle the draft process is. But, but yeah, yeah. Prospecting and, and the Dallas prospecting and the Dallas prospects, I meant to say, is always a wonderful thing. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for coming on here. Always a pleasure to talk to you. We've definitely got to try and do this a little more often, whether we're talking Cowboys or if you want to talk, mavericks or you know nba in general whatever works um open door always for collaboration in that regard most certainly uh cool. i would love to come back again really appreciate you for having me on your show yeah absolutely uh as for everyone else if you haven't already like the video drop a comment subscribe and uh, obviously this will be out as well on the kirby create podcast available on itunes spotify google play all that good stuff and uh just depending on what medium you're watching do one of those things. <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a snippy tagline yet to wrap this up. And I've almost every time almost defaulted into my prospect tagline and it gets me in trouble every time I'm like, and remember, which by the way, the, and remember, I definitely got from you. It's like, <laughs> and remember every, l- 
I'm not on that platform. <laughs> but it was facts, though. Every legend was once a prospect. So. It is very fact. And that, that, that was one of those things when I thought, when I actually realized the tagline for, like, at the time, Dallas Prospect was just one of those ideas for a title I had. Mm-hmm. And uh, once I thought of the tagline, I was like, oh, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, it's perfect <laughs> now. Like, it goes hand in hand. Like, that's such a powerful uh, tagline. Like, that's as true a statement as it gets. And it's uh, memorable, I think. So, mm-hmm. But I'll figure out something eventually to wrap up these shows. So it's not the awkward dismount I'm officially turning this one into. But uh, until next time, guys, stay tuned. Appreciate you, La. Peace. Appreciate you. Peace.